Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome to the Guilty as Charged podcast. Obviously, my name is Steven, and I'm the host, and I'm joined today by a very special guest, Mr. Darius Davis. Darius, thanks for taking the time to join me today, man. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. Thank y'all for having me. Yeah, we're uh, really excited about this. Obviously, we've got, uh, you know, a final home stretch of the season here. You know, uh, I got to ask, you know, we saw the the Pro Bowl promo for Mr. Cameron Dicker. When are we getting a Darius Davis promo, man? What's up with that? Nah, it's funny because I seen that last night and uh, he had me dying. <laughs> he had me <laughs> laughing at it. Uh, he, did, he did a good job. He should uh, go to Hollywood. He did some good acting. But, yeah. Uh, he- or seeing my, uh, uh, I'm not a big, you know, video type guy so i mean I, i'll probably just tweet something out y'all just go out there and vote so but i'm not a big video guy all right all right well uh our listeners will be sure to to vote for you we're uh we're, we're trying to our best to run up the votes for you but um yeah that video of cameron ticker was was hilarious i don't you recognize what the, the that was kind of a pull off of breaking bad right Nah, you know i never watched uh breaking bad so but all right. i i should now out there i seen it yeah yeah no, Cameron did a really good job with it for sure. Uh, the other thing I wanted to to ask you too, we there was a an an article written about you and Quentin and Max a while back from the ESPN reporter. Um, how are we doing on the furniture front? Are we a little bit more settled in now after that that article was written a few months ago? Oh yeah, we <laughs> we doing way better, way better. It, it, it's called it costs some, but we doing way better. Yeah, I'm sleeping real comfortable now. That's good. You guys still do too. <laughs> you still do the sleepovers then. Oh yeah, love to see it. Love to see it. Um, well, Darius, obviously we got we got the Buffalo Bills coming up this weekend. Um, you know, unfortunately, there's been a lot of turnover in in the past week or so. Um, what's been the vibe and what's kind of been the the message from Coach Giff as we kind of pivot into the final three games of the season here? Yeah, you know the vibe. I feel like you know it's the NFL. At the end of the day, we all grown man. You know, we always we always this is your job and. Your job is to perform. So we come up with a great mindset. We had came back Tuesday with a great mindset on the field. We had I feel like we had one of our best practices as far as energy wise on the field. And um Coach Giff, you know, he does he does a, an incredible job uh with getting us prepared. And um, you know, a guy like him, he you know, he's a guy you wanna run through the wall for, you know, a great um players coach, I would say. And um, you know, the his message is you no, know, we, we got these last three games. And um, you know, the last game didn't go how we we wanted to, so it's a game for us. Nobody, I feel like no one expects us to win win this game. You know, we just want to go out there with our best foot forward and compete because you know we still got three weeks left, and you know there's a lot of film that's that's going to be on tape. So, yeah, I love hearing that about Coach Giff. Obviously, you know, we wish we're under different circumstances, but there's bound to be some changes on defense, right? You go from from Coach Staley to Coach Ansley, but. From an offensive perspective or special teams perspective, has there been much of a change for you guys, or it kind of just is is more business as usual this week? Yeah, more more business. I'll say not much change. You know, you know, it's just the little detailed things that we um doing. You know, like doing like executing. It's I feel like we really didn't need like much of a change. You know, just holding everybody just honing in on on the details. So yeah. Um, every draft process, we like to interview, uh, beat reporters who come, who cover the, the schools of the players of the Chargers draft. Obviously the TCU beat reporter was very busy with us this year. Um, yeah. but one of the things that he said about you was that you always seem to have like your, your best return when like the offense was kind of struggling or whenever, like the team really needed that spark. You were kind of that, that spark plug. So is, is that something that you are aware of during the game? Obviously, we saw it during the Jets, during the Patriots game, you've had some huge returns and huge moments. So are you kind of aware of like, hey, my team needs a spark here. Like, I'm going to go and, and, and give that to them in, in, the, in the form of a return. Oh, yeah, for sure. But, you know, like my mindset, I need to go out there every time I get an opportunity to go out there, you know, just create that spark. But, you know, like like you said, like every time I get that big return, the offense, I feel like that's just momentum, you know, um, just going out there, just doing my best, my best foot forward. Just going out there, creating that, giving my, my offense the best field position so they can they can score. So you know, just going out there, doing the little things and just making plays so I can put my offense in a great position to go score. When you when you go out there as a punt returner, what are what are some key things that you're looking for in in terms of like how do you track the ball? In terms of like how do you kind of look at these lanes that are created? What's kind of your process when you get out there? 
to my process is really just seeing what ball, what hash the ball is on first, and then going out there and then seeing where the ball is placed on a on a on a field because you know sometimes you might get a certain kick if it's on a forty rather than it being on like a twenty. So just seeing that thing, then just seeing the punter alignment, seeing how you punt because a lot of punters are directional punters, and mm -hmm. whatever way they are kicked with, that's the way they are punting. Um, punting too. And also looking at reading the gunners too. Gunners give a lot of uh, detail on like where the ball is getting punted to. So just seeing those little things. And I feel like um, as far as tracking the ball, that's that's something you just work at. And you know, I do it every every day after practice and catching the balls on the field, catching the balls on um, day case. So that's something you just get to work at. Do you feel like the directional aspect from punters is is different in the, in the league, like like significantly different than versus college? Not to be honest, bro. I didn't like. I didn't really like read the punters in in okay. um, college. Yeah, I really didn't read the punters in college. I just whatever they kicked it through. That's what I ran to. So, but I'm um, thankful just to be with Coach Fick and he taught me so much uh, as far as just reading punters. You know, just how to watch film on special teams. Yeah, I was gonna ask you next about Coach Ficken because you spoke recently about he was the one who kind of advocated for you and and the selection. Um, what what does Coach Ficken mean to you, and what does he what does he brought to kind of your game as a as a as a return specialist? Yeah, he means so much to me. Like I said, he one kind of advocated for me to uh, be here, so I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run through the wall for that guy. You know, I got so much respect for him. My my family got so much respect for him. You know. Um, he really just helped me like with my fundamentals, you know, just keeping my arms tight and um, um, like I said, how to how to watch film, you know, just reading punters, reading the gunners and stuff like that. Yeah, I I think uh, I can uh, speak for the fan base on this one. We would also run for the run through the wall for Coach Ficking because uh, special teams history was kind of a struggle before he got here. So we're we're very grateful for him. Um, what about Josh Harris and and that the uh that aspect of things because. Um, you know, there was a, a couple of quotes after the Patriots game that Josh was kind of, you know, uh, leading things in terms of preparing for the the weather in that regard. What does Josh Harris mean to you guys as specialists? Oh, yeah. Josh, I feel like Josh, Josh is the best long snapper when it comes to covering and doing all the things. You know, Josh, he's a great leader for our special teams core as a whole because, you know, he, he's the one that holds those player led meetings. And um, a, a guy like Josh is, is just what this team needs. And, um, uh, he just bring a lot of energy to this special teams core. There we go. Let's hear it. Josh also has been on the show. He's very kind with his time. We appreciate him. Um, let's let's switch gears here to talk a little bit about the offense. Um, you know, obviously Keenan has been ruled out for this week, but how have you feel like? How do you feel like you've grown uh, as a wide receiver throughout this season during your your rookie year? Yeah, just having an opportunity just to watch Keenan, also Mike, also Josh, those guys who who solidified themselves in the league so far. And um just just seeing how they do things, how they go about things, like Keenan, his releases, his route running, you know, um Josh is also his route running. And um just watching those guys and just learning from those guys, it just made me a better route runner and better player. Yeah, I love to hear that. Do you feel like you um have really like a strong grasp of like what Kellen kind of envisions for you th this year? Or do you feel like that's been kind of a work in progress? Uh, no, I have a grasp, you know, um, I think his vision for me is just um, give me the ball in space and um, create those plays for me. So I could, do, you know, go out there and do my thing, make guys miss, and, um, create a spark for the team. Yeah. We, um, we were joking on, uh, on Twitter. I don't know if you've seen like the Falcons videos they're doing from like way up above. Um, oh, but we, yeah. we were all saying that if there was somebody on the chargers that we could get that for, it would be you because of like the way that you cut back. I remember the chiefs screen in particular, where you like, there was just like a tiny, tiny little window and you hit that thing. You went vertical. What, what do you look for on offense? Cause I feel like the windows as a receiver are generally smaller than special teams. Is that a fair assessment? Mm, yeah. That, yeah. You're right. Cause I feel like from return, I have more like, I have more time to like set up my blocks and more time to like actually like see what's going on. But like as far as like screen screen plays, everything's going like boom, boom, boom. So like yeah, but like I feel like that's like it's something like natural. Can't really like coach it. And um 
like those screen plays, you just gotta hit it because if you don't, man, they got those have they have those three hundred three hundred pound D linemen coming down the line. So yeah. you just yeah, you gotta hit it. Would you rather? Uh, are you more comfortable on a screen or a jet sweep, or are you good with both? I'm good with both. It don't matter to me. <laughs> All right. All right. Sounds good. Well, Darius, we got a few more questions here. Um, and then I actually, we have some questions from our, our most loyal listeners that I want to get to. Um, but you've, it is this season. Obviously, you've got a tree behind you. Uh, what is your uh, your your favorite Christmas tradition that you, you've done in, in your life? I'm just going to my grandparents' house with all my cousins and uh, aunties and my mom and dad. Everybody just coming there, just having a good time. You got a big family? Yeah, we do. I do. I have right. a, it's not too big, but it's it's big enough. <laughs> Who is that? Who is that? Oh, that was Quinn Nils when he was leaving. Nice, nice, nice. Cool, cool, cool. Um, what about uh we always like to ask ask this question, uh, favorite and least favorite Christmas movie? My favorite Christmas movie. Um this I think it's called This Christmas. I don't know, but if I I don't know if that's the right title, but it's with Chris Brown on it, or I would say yeah. Home Alone, because I always grew up watching Home Alone. Yeah. And least favorite, uh, <laughs> uh, probably The Grinch. But oh, my favorite, my favorite is uh Friday After Next. All right, Friday After Next. Okay, are we talking The Grinch with Jim Carrey, the yeah. like live action one? Okay, not a big fan of The Grinch. All right, sounds good. Um. All right, so some questions from some of our listeners. Um, Keegan Tierney wants to know if anybody on the team can beat you in a race. No. All right. Derwin, Derwin has said in the past that Dean is the fastest guy on the team. So you, you're saying you're the fastest. Oh, that, that was in the past. He didn't. He probably haven't met me yet. That's probably why he said that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. We got to get we got to get a, a 40 yard dash between you and Dean. Uh, we we got to see that one. Um, next one here from uh, Brady Wooten wants to know what is the biggest difference between returning in college and returning in the pros? Yeah, I love that question. Um, in college, um, everyone can come down in college. And um, in the NFL, I I feel like it's easier in the NFL because only the Gunners can come down. Mm. You know, I feel like you have more. I feel like you have more opportunity um in the NFL than the college. So the biggest, yeah, that would say spacing. I would say. And time there we go shout out to brady good question there uh jacob wants to know what the emotions were like for you after you scored against the jets now it was crazy because you know it's monday night football i always I always grew up watching monday night football and i had my parents in the stands too and my cousin um it was just a great moment uh just to go out there um you know my blog is say it's been a long i feel like it was a long time coming for us just going out there and we're just putting everything together. You know, it was just a special moment. Love to hear that. Love to hear that. Um, Tyler wants to know, uh, at what point do you feel like you can break a punt for a big return? Every moment. I say Every that. moment. I love it. Love it. Um, let's see. Uh, Mike B wants to know your thoughts about the kickoff rule. That was obviously changed heading into the season. Do you feel like uh if that rule were the same you feel like you could make it strong as an impact as a as a kick return or what are your thoughts on that rule change i mean Tom, we had that rule we had that rule in college too also so um oh. i feel like i feel like i feel like it's not a big i in my opinion it's not a big difference in my opinion because like unless unless you have like a um like a field return and it's kicked way into the boundary i feel like that's that's better for the uh returning team gotcha Gotcha. All right, Darius. Well, uh, we appreciate the time, man. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. We wish you uh, and the team nothing but the best down the stretch. And I uh, hope you and your family have a, a very Merry Christmas as well. Thank you. Make sure y'all go vote for all of everybody for the Pro Bowl. There we go. There we go. What a good team. I'd love to see it. All right, guys. Uh, you heard the man. Make sure you go vote for him. Uh, rest of the specialists for sure. Keenan, Khalil, all those guys that are for the Pro Bowl. Um, we'll, uh, we'll see you guys next time. As always, bolt up.